Hi folks and welcome to today's Drive to Survive Quick Hit. I'm Chris Daly and today's topic is going to be fire apparatus and emergency vehicle rollovers. The reason I picked this topic is in recent weeks we've seen a number of fire apparatus roll over while responding to or from an emergency call. And as a result, I felt it was very important for us to address this issue. Fortunately, in most of the crashes that occurred in recent weeks, the firefighters received only minor injuries, most likely because they were wearing their seatbelt. So remember to wear your seatbelt. But that being said, let's take a quick look at rollover dynamics. Keep in mind that in the normal in-person or virtual training program for Drive to Survive, this topic takes about an hour and a half to two hours to discuss. However, for the purpose of this quick hit, we're going to try and do it in about five minutes. So the first thing you need to understand when we discuss fire apparatus rollovers is the concept of G-force. The fancy term is lateral G-force, but don't let that freak you out. That's simply G-force that pushes on the side of a vehicle. The amount of G-force a vehicle will experience while rounding a curve or during some sort of evasive maneuver will depend on how fast the vehicle is traveling and how hard the driver turns the steering wheel. Therefore, you, as the fire apparatus or emergency vehicle driver, control how much G-force you're putting on the vehicle. And if you generate too much G-force and push it too hard on the side of your vehicle, it will eventually roll over. The amount of G-force a vehicle can absorb before things start to go badly is known as the rollover threshold. The rollover threshold of a vehicle depends on how wide it is and how high the center of gravity is. Your personal vehicle, which is probably some sort of type of sedan or perhaps a small SUV, has a very high rollover threshold because it's not that tall. Therefore, it can absorb a lot of lateral g-force before it eventually rolls over. However, your fire apparatus is not the same. Fire trucks tend to have high centers of gravity, and as a result, they are much less stable. Your fire apparatus cannot absorb that much lateral g-force before it flips onto its side. As a comparison, most personal or passenger vehicles can absorb about 1.2 to 1.4 lateral g's pushing on the side of the vehicle before they flip over. Your fire truck, however, can only absorb about 0.5 to 0.6 lateral Gs before it flips onto its side. This shows you the difference in vehicle dynamics and why it's so important to change your mindset when you get out of your car in the parking lot, walk in and get behind the wheel of a large fire apparatus, especially while responding under stressful conditions to an emergency call. Now let's take a look at how this would play out in real life. We're going to look at a curve just outside of Westchester, Pennsylvania. This curve has a known radius of 320 feet which allows us to create a table that will tell us how much lateral g-force a vehicle will experience as it rounds this curve at different speeds. Notice that if a vehicle rounds this curve any greater than 50 miles an hour, the lateral g-force pushing on the side of the vehicle will exceed around 0.50 lateral g. This is right around the rollover threshold of a standard fire apparatus. As a result, the fire truck will most likely roll onto its side if it travels through this curve any greater than 50 miles an hour. However, keep in mind, at this speed, the driver is operating the vehicle at about 100% of its ability, and you should not be operating your vehicle anywhere close to that threshold. Instead, your goal as a professional emergency vehicle driver should be to minimize the amount of lateral g-force you generate while wounding a curve or during an evasive maneuver. If you were to heed the curve advisory speed sign for this particular curve, which is 25 miles an hour, as we can see in the chart, we would only generate 0.13 lateral G pushing on the side of the vehicle as we rounded the curve. Therefore, this would be a safe and tolerable amount of G-force, and you would be able to travel through the curve safely and make it to the other side. Now let's take a look at an urban intersection, because it's not uncommon to see an emergency vehicle, especially a fire apparatus, flipped onto its side while attempting to round a corner at a 90-degree urban intersection. This is why. If we were to take this intersection in downtown Westchester, Pennsylvania, which has a curve radius of 30 feet, which is very sharp, it's a 90 degree intersection, so that's not surprising, and we were to generate a similar table to show us the lateral g-force at different speeds while a vehicle rounded this curve, we can see at just 15 miles an hour, the fire apparatus would generate enough lateral g-force to flip it onto its side. 15 miles an hour. And this is why it's not uncommon to see emergency vehicles with high centers of gravity flipped over while rounding one road to another at an urban intersection. Or even more ironic to see a fire apparatus flipped onto its side in a parking lot during a driver training exercise. Because as you've learned over the past few minutes, it does not take much speed or steering input to generate enough lateral g-force to flip a fire truck onto its side.
The handling characteristics of your fire truck are much different than your personal vehicle. You need to remember that and respect that when responding to or from an emergency call. So to summarize, remember to slow down well in advance of a curve or any sort of 90 degree or sharp turn as this will minimize the amount of lateral g-force you put on the vehicle. Also remember to avoid distractions or ending our curve too fast as this may cause you to drift off the right side of the road. When that happens, you may find yourself in a situation where you're struggling to bring the vehicle back onto the highway and you may find yourself overcorrecting and therefore generating an artificial curve in the road, which leads to a rollover crash. So if you drift off the right side of the road, bring the vehicle to a safe stop, and then slowly and carefully bring the vehicle back onto the highway. So as I said in the very beginning, this topic typically takes about an hour and a half if you were to attend an in-person or the virtual online Drive to Survive training program. However, in light of the recent events throughout the country, I wanted to make sure we got some information out there quickly. So I appreciate you taking the time to attend this virtual class. Hopefully you learned something, and I really hope you apply it. So remember, buckle up, slow down, and think. Be careful out there. For more information on this topic, as well as other advanced topics related to emergency vehicle driver safety, I highly recommend you pick up a copy of my textbook from Fire Engineering Books and Videos. Using this coupon code, you can get 30% off your online order. I also recommend you go to the website www.drivetosurvive.org where you can get information on both in-person and virtual online classes. For those of you fortunate enough to be heading off to FDIC, please stop by and visit my four-hour or two-hour seminar where we'll be talking about these topics at length. So again, thanks for stopping by and remember, buckle up, slow down, and think. Be safe out there.